Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video this is something a little bit different because I'm going to be reviewing two lenses as I make my move. As you can see there, I have a U-Haul in the back as well as some cool artwork. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be comparing these two lenses, the size to it, 32mm f1.8 and the 35mm f2 from Fuji. I want to see what the differences are between these two lenses because frankly they have about similar apertures and about the same similar focal range and so we're going to be testing these two in different types of conditions while I head to Florida. Alright so now we're going to be doing a comparison between the two with the Fuji being on the right, the Zeiss on the left and because this is going to be a pretty lengthy comparison I'm going to basically speed up the other um, samples but for now these are going to be wide open and as you can see the Fuji does have a little bit more punch to it in the colors whereas the Zeiss is a tad wider it's somewhat sharper in the center when compared to the Fuji but you'll see that the Fuji has just a bit more punch and the colors are a little bit more saturated look at the blacks the blacks definitely look a lot better on the Fuji than they do on the Zeiss. And you'll see the white, it just looks a bit washed out. But overall, I say the Fuji looks just a tad bit softer, not by much. Um, but you'll see that with the Zeiss, it definitely looks a bit better. Now, when we move in. Um, to the corners, that's a different story altogether because now you start to see how Fuji definitely takes the lead here. It's a lot sharper. The only thing that I'm noticing with uh, the Fuji is that there's a lot of definition up until the corners, um, the extreme corners, where you'll see that it's just too blurry. If you see here, it just looks too blurry and you will see that throughout this lens unfortunately never gets super sharp um, in the corners the extreme corners and so I'm a little disappointed because I was expecting a little bit more now it still gets plenty sharp as you can see here it's still sharper than the Zeiss wide open but it's bothersome I you know I was expecting a little bit more I'm looking here at the top left again the blacks look richer it looks a bit more saturated um, and just a tad more definition overall if you're looking at these at viewing distances you wouldn't be able to tell the difference now both of them are f2 again the size definitely shows more sharpness in the center now when we move into the corners Again, the Fuji takes the lead. Now, when we look at the extreme corners, again, the same thing. And you'll see a recurring theme here where it just there's just a mess of blurriness that it's you cannot get rid of. No matter how hard you try, you're either going to have to crop or do something else. Now, here, we're again seeing the Zeiss just being a tad bit sharper. And now, at f2.8, you can clearly see that the contrast is up to par with the Fuji. Again, when we look at the top right, you know, you see more sharpness with the Fuji. Same thing in top, um, the bottom right, but again, that, that blurriness at, at the corners, the, the far corners are, you know, just really unpleasing. I was really expecting more. Not F4, we're basically seeing the same, and you're gonna see this throughout. Fuji is just a tad bit softer in the center than uh, the Zeiss, but the Fuji definitely has a bit more punch when it comes to the colors. Um, then when we go to the corners, again, Fuji takes the lead here. It's a bit sharper. It has um, more detail to it, except in the extreme corners where you'll see again, it's just blurry. And I don't know what that is. I, I wish that, you know, Fuji would have either made the lens slightly bigger to accommodate for the glass. Because I would have much rather had a 
tiny bit bigger lens that gives me edge to edge sharpness and overall just excellent performance. Now it's fairly sharp and I guess for what you're paying, you also have to keep in mind that you're not going to get the best highest quality lens. Again, now when we're looking at these two, we see the same uh, trend and it's going to continue to um, basically throughout the entire um, aperture range up until we get to the point where you start to see more diffraction with the Fuji and that will be the only downside. But overall, just by looking at these, what do you guys think? If you were looking at these at normal viewing distances, would you be able to tell just by looking at them? I mean, of course, there is a slight difference in focal length because of Fuji is 35, which will give you roughly about a 52.5 millimeter field of view in 35 millimeter terms, whereas the Zeiss would give you more of a 48. And believe it or not, if you're looking at these two, it's quite wider, even though it doesn't sound like much, it is wider. But you will, you'll see how, you know, they perform similar enough. I wouldn't be able to tell difference if I was just looking at them at normal viewing distances, where you may start to notice differences is when you do large prints. And again, that's where Fuji would definitely do better. Now, you would still see that, you know, there's there's the blurriness in the corners. And I honestly don't know why. I, I think that they could have done better. I think that they could have done the lenses. I mean, uh, manufactured the lenses slightly bigger to accommodate for that glass. It's just make them a little bit more expensive. I'm certain that most of us would have paid that little extra to get that better performance because what's the point of having a small lens that is light to carry around but it's not going to give you you know edge to edge sharpness at f8 or f11 it's you know something that i'm not really impressed by again looking at these over here there's just not much to see i think that you know you, you're seeing just a tad bit you know, they're, they're narrowing the gap now. The only thing that I can see is the Zeiss, even though it's not as sharp, at the very least, you're still getting good results throughout the frame. All right, so I'm currently recording on the Zeiss to it, uh, 32 millimeter F1.8. And I have the 35 millimeter uh, F2 in my hand. Just wanna see what the differences are uh, in terms of video so that you guys can also uh, get a chance to compare the two. What do you guys think when they're stopped down? Now I had to stop down this to about f16. Granted, it was a different uh, background altogether, but right now this is only stopped down to about f10, and it seems to be properly exposed from what I can tell for just looking at uh, the screen. Uh, so, what do you guys think? One thing that I did notice with the Zeiss was that it does make a small grinding noise. It's barely audible, but if you do get close to the camera, you will be able to hear it. Now, that being said, I haven't listened to the footage yet, and because I'm recording with an external mic, the Rope Video Mic uh, Micro, then that might have picked up the noise. I guess we'll find out when, uh, when we listen to the footage. So you guys tell me uh, what you guys think between these two lenses as they're recording. Right now I'm at f11 uh, on uh, the Fuji 35mm f2 so you guys can kind of see what the quality is while recording as well. So now that I made a stop here at Bucky's in Katy, I'm going to uh, basically show you what I meant when I was talking about the aperture being a little bit more dampened. Uh, here I have the to it 32 millimeter f 1.8 and so I'm gonna get it closer to the mic to see if you can guys hear the difference um, I'll put it just right here it's very solid in its clicks um, 
it just feels well dampened I really like that about this not that uh, the Fuji is bad it's not bad at all it's very clicky um, it's just a little bit more noisy and I know I'm being nitpicky here these are just really good lenses and so I have to do have to pick something okay all right so I'm gonna get uh, the Fuji 35 millimeter f2 closer to the mic All right, I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's a little bit more noisy, and it's also not as dampened. Like if I wanted to stop at an aperture, it just keeps moving a little bit. It's not as clicky, and I know that the 35 millimeter f1.4 is even worse when you're trying to set the aperture. But yeah, just to give you an idea of what the aperture does, um, I mean, how the aperture works, um, really, they're both equally good, I'd say. Um, they're both responsive but I just prefer the one on the size to it. Now what about close focusing distance? Well the Carl Zeiss definitely focuses a lot closer um, despite the fact that it is a little wider it still focuses uh, much closer not much closer or just a tiny bit closer than the 35 millimeter f2. Now that being said because it can focus a little bit closer it will actually give you the same perspective as a 35 millimeter f2 now you have to be careful when you do this because if you're doing portraits and you get just as close as you would with a 35 it will look a little bit more distorted um, as far as the facial uh, facial features go so you have to keep that in mind as well in this comparison we're looking at close focusing distance now as we zoom in we're going to see how soft the Fuji is in comparison to the Zeiss. It also suffers from some ghosting as well as some chromatic aberration. And you'll see here as we scroll and, and look at the image how bad it is. And you can see the Zeiss uh, does exhibit some chromatic aberration as well. But look at how bad the Fuji looks. I really wasn't expecting the Fuji to look this bad. It's just very soft. And you do get some hard edges and outlining on the Zeiss as we've uh, seen earlier. But look at this. Look at how sharp it looks in comparison. It looks a lot cleaner. And overall, if you really had to use this lens for close-ups, I would definitely pick the Zeiss over the Fuji for this one. You can clearly see how superior the optics are in this comparison. And I wasn't expecting Fuji to be doing this bad. Now, what do you guys think? Uh, please let me know down in the comments. What do you guys think so far between these two lenses for close-ups? What other differences are you noticing here? I can definitely see that for the most part, the Zeiss is the clear winner in this test. So in this round and for close-ups, I would have to give it to the Zeiss. Now, if you decide to take off the hood off the Tuit, it now becomes much more manageable in size. And if I compare it side by side, it's almost about half the size of the body. But in reality, it's a quite um, compact and small lens, as you can see from these two. Now, one thing that I do have to mention is that the Tuit is made in Japan, whereas the Fuji is made in the Philippines. Now, as you'll see uh, later in the video, you'll see why I have some gripes and complaints regarding um, the build quality of the lens. Because they're both excellent lenses, they have good build quality, but Unfortunately, there will be some downsides that we'll be discussing later on in this video. Now here's where Fuji really does very well. It's the out of focus renderings or bokeh. The Carl Zeiss to it is a little bit harsher. It does remind me of the Carl Zeiss 50mm f1.4 ZE uh, that I used to have. It has harsher bokeh. Um, some outlining it's not as smooth as the Fuji so we're gonna be doing a comparison here uh, between the two I'll have more samples at the end of the video but for now I just want to compare them really quick side by side here in Houston uh, and see what we get 
In this comparison, we're going to be looking at the out of focus areas or the bokeh. And as you can see here, designs definitely looks a bit cleaner. Now, when we look at that area that's out of focus, you can start to see some weird softness to it, whereas you can't really see it on the designs. It's actually a lot cleaner. But when you look at the bokeh, it definitely looks like the Fuji is a lot smoother. Now, I would have to say that bokeh is definitely subjective and there are some people out there who actually prefer the look of designs because it has a more classic vintage look. And like I mentioned earlier, it reminds me a lot of my call size um, 50 millimeter 1.4 ZE. It definitely has that characteristic. Whereas the Fuji just looks very smooth and pleasing. But you have to compare them side by side to actually notice any differences. Over here, you see how the Fuji or the Zeiss definitely has some outlining that you can't see with the Fuji. It just looks a lot smoother. And you will see this throughout. If you compare them side by side, you always pick out the Zeiss from the Fuji because it has the outlining that you won't see with the Fuji. In this comparison, we're actually looking at how similar can they be at times. And so I kind of looked for the same framing and took the images. And then when I compared them side by side, I was having a hard time. But when we zoom in and we take a look, you see that the Fuji again has that softness ghosting to it that you just don't see with the Zeiss. The Zeiss has a lot more sharpness to the optics. And then when it comes to the rendering, it looks very similar. Again, it's not until you start looking around the image to, to look for specific details that you will find which one is which. Sometimes you will see things like, for instance, the bokeh circles. And if we zoom in, and take a look, you'll see that you'll pick them out because obviously Designs has that outlining that the Fuji just does not have. But I also realize that there are people out there who will prefer the look of Designs. This is very subjective. And so if you prefer that, then that's totally fine. I do see the Fuji just being a tiny bit softer. Now, when we look at this, area over here it's going to be more apparent because you'll start to see the hard outlining that the Zeiss has whereas the Fuji just looks very clean very soft and also you start to see how the Zeiss has a bit more chromatic aberration in that area so what do you guys think now these portraits we're also going to be looking at bokeh and sharpness and in this test, I think that the Fuji is actually a bit sharper. It looks like the eyebrows have a bit more definition as well as the eyelashes. You just see a tiny bit more contrast as well. When we look at the hair, the same thing. You can definitely see how there is a bit more sharpness to the size, I mean, uh, the Fuji. Now, when we look at the image overall and, and we start to look for the bokeh in the background, then yes, that's when it becomes apparent. The Fuji actually looks quite pleasing. When we look at the Zeiss, it, it just looks a lot harsher. It actually looks like mushrooms. Let's look at another area and see the Fuji has some oblong shapes, whereas the Zeiss has this mushroom-like um, bokeh. And then when we look back here, we could definitely see that fence, the details and the outlining. Whereas with the Fuji, it just looks very smooth, very soft. You can't really tell. And then again, look at that circle. And then the, the one on the Zeiss has that hard outline. Um, let's see what else. Well, let's see over here. Okay, again, we see the hard outlining as well as some chromatic aberrations that we don't see with the Fuji. The Fuji definitely looks a lot smoother. And let's see what else. Down here, you could definitely see the grass. It's it's just 
jarring actually uh, looking at the shirt or the jacket you can definitely see that there's a bit more contrast to the Fuji where the Zeiss looks a bit washed out um, let me see what else okay let's look at this area over here yep you can definitely see the grass it's a bit more pronounced and let's look at this area again look at the softness of the Fuji now we're going to be comparing micro contrast because I've heard that the Carl Zeiss has a little bit more micro contrast and so we're going to check that out we're going to basically compare them side to side I found some foliage that has a lot of detail and so what we're going to do is we're going to take pictures of both of them at f8 to see for sharpness or to look for sharpness and then we're going to convert them to black and white to look for those details and see which one has more micro contrast in this test we're going to be looking for micro contrast now these two have been shot on a tripod at f8 and we're going to be looking to see what the differences are between these two now right off the bat I can definitely see that the Fuji is a tad softer um, and also a bit cooler when compared to the Zeiss. The Zeiss seems to keep the image across the entire frame fairly sharp and I don't know what's going on here but the Fuji seems to get softer um, the further away you get from the center. Um, which is what we've seen before in that comparison when we shot the artwork. Now here I basically converted them to monochrome to see what differences are and it's very subtle but I can definitely see that the Zeiss does exhibit darker tones and so you can see that they they have about the same um, tonality range but there is something about the Zeiss it does have a bit more nuance if I can say that um, definitely not something that you should be worried about because they do perform better but again looking at the corners I think that the Fuji is just a tad bit softer and so again very disappointed about this because I was expecting a little bit more from the Fuji but nonetheless I don't see micro contrast on either I finally made it to Florida uh, I stopped at Tallahassee to uh, include the chromatic aberration slash flaring test but there was as much on the 35 millimeter f2 and I didn't realize that until I got back home and so because of that I decided not to include that in the results but also this review has gotten quite lengthy at over 20 minutes and so we're just going to keep it here. Um, I'm going to give my final thoughts on these two lenses and I think that they're similar enough that really only the minor differences are going to set these two apart. If you like a wider aperture then you're going to go with the Zeiss. If you want uh, a Fuji lens that goes with your Fuji and focuses better, uh, slightly better that also is less noisy for video then you're gonna choose the 35 millimeter f2 the advantages as you stop down are going to be minimal also a deciding factor is going to be the bokeh if you look at the Zeiss it has a very classic rendering to it and some people might not like that but if you're one of those then that's the lens that you know it's gonna work for you instead of having a manual lens to get that look you can have an autofocusing lens that gives you that look and you're not not gonna have any issues with that uh, with the Fuji I am a little disappointed and I'm gonna say I expected a little better the corners never got really sharp and so because of that I'm going to be returning the Fuji 35 millimeter f2 now the Zeiss I'm also going to sell that lens and now you're probably gonna be asking yourselves what is it that you're gonna get well I'm gonna go with the 35 millimeter f 1.4 now I used to own that lens and really I miss it uh, the wider aperture going down to f1.4 is just magical and I think that no matter how many lenses I've tried in that focal length I still think that this is the right lens uh, at least for me again we all have different needs 
and so if you don't need that extra stop then by all means go with the Fuji if you think that corners are going to be a, li a little bit important or just a tiny bit more important then you go with the Zeiss and if you want to spend a little bit more then you go with the Fuji the Fuji definitely gets sharp in the corners I don't have it right now to do a side-by-side -side comparison and I would have loved to have that lens so that we could have tested all three but it would have taken too too long and so we're just gonna leave it at that again um, if you like what you see please make sure that you subscribe you uh, this is gonna be a Fuji channel from now on and I'm gonna start you know bringing more gear I do have a lot of things to uh, to discuss and we'll be going in depth uh, basically going uh, looking at what lenses are available what cameras are available that are going to fit your needs and so with that in mind uh, please give it a like give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one hit like if you like this video also hit subscribe and the bell so you never miss a new video thanks for watching